The subject of this video is phase diagrams, and the metaphor really to use to understand a phase diagram is that of a map. A phase diagram is essentially a phase map showing you, as a function of temperature and pressure on a substance, what the phase of matter of that substance will be. So for example, we have pressure on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis, and this is sort of like latitude and longitude on a map. The phases occupy regions or territories of the map at various regions of temperature and pressure. So for example, we have solid, liquid, and gas regions in this phase diagram, and these are the possible phases of matter for this substance. We also have these border lines or, or borders, if you will, that are highlighted in red, these are what we call phase boundaries, places where two phases or even three phases are in equilibrium. In other words, they have equal stabilities and they're, for example, forming and disappearing at equal rates. Now, what can we do with this phase map? Well, of course, we can determine at any point what the phase of a substance will be. So given conditions of pressure and temperature for a substance, we can determine the phase we're looking at under those conditions, and that's useful. But we can do more with phase diagrams as well. We can also determine the temperature or the pressure of a phase transition. Temperature is more common. It's less common for us to think about transition pressures, but pressure can cause phase transitions at a constant temperature by pushing atoms or molecules closer together or allowing them to get farther apart. But for the time being, let's focus on transition temperatures. So imagine we were thinking about some pressure, one atmosphere, that's a point on the y-axis. If we start on the left at zero Kelvin, of course we're in the solid phase, but as we walk to the right and increase the temperature, notice that we'll move into the liquid and gas phases. And at these green points where this dotted line crosses the phase boundaries, a phase transition is going to occur. And if we project down to the x-axis at those points, we can see the transition temperatures associated with each phase transition. So for example, where we go from solid to liquid right here, this is the melting point, Tm, the normal melting point, we might say, being at one atmosphere. And if we look here, we're going from the liquid to the gas phase as we increase the temperature, and this is, of course, the normal boiling point, Tb. So we can use the phase diagram to determine the temperature or pressure associated with phase transitions as well. And to do this analogously for the pressure of a phase transition, well, then we're at a constant temperature, and we're walking up for example, from zero pressure up to very high pressure. And we go from, of course, a gas at zero pressure to a liquid at moderate pressures and finally to a solid at very high pressures in general. Although there are substances that do not solidify at very high pressures because this line actually slopes backward as opposed to in this direction. And we'll see that actually on the next slide. This slide shows us the phase diagram for water, and it's got some really interesting features that are gonna help us deepen our understanding of phase diagrams. The first thing I'll point out is that these dotted lines indicate where the normal melting and boiling points are at the usual positions of zero degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. Something new we should notice about this diagram, which is actually present in the previous diagram as well, we just sort of glossed over it, is that there's a point on the map where we sort of reach what we might think of as uncharted territory. Uh, what's going on out past this point called the critical point where there are no more phase boundaries and the liquid and gas regions appear to be blending together. Like what's going on there? What phase are we looking at there? That phase is what we call a supercritical fluid. We're at very high temperature and very high pressure beyond what's called the critical point where the distinction between gas and liquid sort of loses its meaning. We're looking at a phase that is not liquid and it's not gas. It's what we call a supercritical fluid. It has fluid-like properties, but it's out beyond the critical point. So we can do all the usual stuff with water's phase diagram in ter terms of determining the temperatures of phase transitions. But one interesting thing about water in particular, which is not normal, is that the solid liquid phase boundary has a negative slope, it slopes backwards. What's much more typical is for the solid liquid phase boundary to slope in this direction. And to understand why that is and what's so bizarre about this negatively sloping solid liquid phase boundary, 
Let's think about the implications of this. This means that as I start, for example, with ice at some pressure and at some temperature, let's say below the melting point or below the freezing point, I increase the pressure, I can actually get to a point where pressing down on the ice causes it to liquefy. At higher pressures, the melting point decreases, the melting temperature decreases to a point where eventually it dips below the temperature I'm at and liquid water forms. This is not normal, right? Since the solid is typically more dense than the liquid, pressing down on a solid should cause it to remain in the solid state, should cause it not to liquefy. For water, this is not the case. The density of ice is actually lower than the density of water. Ice is less dense than water. And you know this from everyday life. Ice floats in water. It's less dense than water. This means that when I press down on ice, and get the molecules closer together, I can actually go from the less dense solid phase to the more dense liquid phase. And that is evidenced by this backward sloping or negatively sloping phase boundary. Bizarre, but one of the very unique and very important properties of water. It's what allows, for example, icebergs and ice sheets to float on top of water. This slide shows a phase diagram for carbon dioxide, and this also has some unique features. One of the unique features of the phase diagram of carbon dioxide is that there is a solid gas phase boundary at some temperatures and pressures, including pretty typical pressures around one atmosphere, the solid sublimes directly to gas. There is no transition through a liquid phase at relatively low pressures. The liquid phase of carbon dioxide only exists at relatively high pressures. And carbon dioxide has a relatively large supercritical fluid region that requires high pressure but only moderate temperatures. So supercritical carbon dioxide finds applications in industry, for example, in decaffeinating caffeinated beverages. It's easy to generate it because all we need is relatively high pressure and we don't need the very high temperatures that are often required to get supercritical fluids for other substances. One last thing I want to mention concerns this point where all three phase boundaries come together. We see it in the phase diagram for carbon dioxide, and we can also see this point in the phase diagram for water and our example phase diagram for the first slide. This is called the triple point. The triple point is very special because it's the point at which all three phases, solid, liquid, and gas, are all in equilibrium with each other. They're all of equal stability. So bizarre things start happening. We get melting, freezing, you know, condensation, evaporation, all happening all at once at equal rates, and the substance takes on some pretty bizarre properties. I'll link out to a video that shows the triple point of a substance and what it looks like in practice at the end of this video. Just to summarize, phase diagrams are a critically important tool for helping us understand how the phase of a substance changes with temperature and pressure. It's a map of phase as a function of these variables. It also gives us a sense of phase boundaries and phase transitions, the temperatures and pressures where these occur, and how they relate to, for example, differences in the density of the solid and liquid phase.